Hello for those of you who do not know me. My name is Crystal Calvin and I am an EXP Realty agent located in the state of Georgia. Um, this video is going to answer a lot of questions that I've been getting as far as like my personal finances. How do I budget? How do I how do I have a good you know, credit score, how am I able to jump in and out of these home purchases, rental properties, that type of thing. And uh, first, let me just say my credit was eight up. I was a single mother of two. So when I say I've been through a lot, I can relate. Trust me. I judge no one. I had collection agencies coming after me. Hell, I just had one coming after me just last year. But this video is going to help and give you the tools of how I tackle those situations and how I prevent them from like greatly affecting my credit score so that I'm able to continue to dig deeper into real estate. Please stay tuned for my video and stay to the end, please. Thank you. Oh, yep. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's go. Oh, before I go any further, I am not a finance professional. I am only a real estate agent. So do not wholeheartedly to any advice I give you when I mention my budget sheet, my credit scores, experience, or nothing like that. Like this is a free video. None of my services as far as my finances I charge because I am no professional. Again, these are things or tips that I kind of picked up and kind of helped me as far as like keeping a good credit score and maintaining my expenses and just overall living a comfortable life not just for me but for my kids okay so, yeah. we gonna start with my budget sheet and my first column besides the mortgage and the groceries these are basically like consistent expenses it's stuff that is reoccurring every month you can never pay it down to a zero it's gonna keep coming and coming every month until you no longer want the services so um yeah, so that's basically what this column is. And the second column is like my personal expenses. So that's anything dealing with like my credit cards or like if I take out a personal loan. So this one only has one column, like I said, because it's like a consistent payment every month. It never fluctuates, changes or nothing. It's a set amount with the company. The second row has three different ones because they're mostly credit cards. So you're going to have a monthly. You got to keep track of how much you've got on the cards and then how much they allow you to spend on the card. So that's why there's more than um, one row or um, column. But for example, like my monthlies for the cards that I have like a charged amount on, I never pay less than 100 a month. I mean, like my minimum payments for my credit cards are very low. So yeah, the minimum amount you're going to see is like 100 a month. But you know, you definitely pay what you can never push out more than what you're able to. So if I can, I stick to this plan where my minimum is $100 a month. If not more, it just depends. Like I said, for here, for example, you see $200 a month only because my Chase credit card interest rate was freaking ridiculous. So instead of paying $100, I'll pay two. So um, as you can see, like my credit limit total is almost 51000 um, and then my full amount that I've got charged on all credit cards total is a little less than $8,500. So I'm not in a bad position. Like I said, $51,000 credit, but I'm only using $8,500 of it. So if a lender or somebody was to look at my credit, I'd, pro I'd be in pretty good shape. So um, another thing that you'll notice, like I have some of these in like a bubblegum pink. That's only because I pay attention, <coughs> excuse me, to like my credit limit. So let's take example, like Christmas coming up, right? So what comes with Christmas? Christmas gifts. And I got two kids, so I'm going to Christmas shopping. So for example, I'm going to want to pay attention to my credit limits that are high. So when I make a lot of payments and I, I don't want to use my personal money, I use my credit cards. And um, it's smart to use the ones that have a higher credit limit because let's say total like my kids gifts were like, $1,500. It'll be smart to use one of these. Let's say my star card. Let's go grocery shopping in the PX. I got almost $8,000 credit limit. So if I spend another $1,500 on this, I will still be good as far as my credit card usage. Versus if I try to use my SkyMouse American Express card, it only has a thousand. I would surpass 30%, 50% card usage, which you don't want to go past. You definitely don't want to go past 50 
but definitely try to stay below 30%. But again, like I said, I keep these in pink. So it's just self-awareness of when I'm shopping major, let's say I just want to spoil myself or I want to spoil my kids or my husband and take somebody somewhere. And I don't want to use my own money at that time. I use one of my high paying um, credit cards that has a high credit limit. I'm sorry. So um, another thing I track on here is like my cars uh, the car insurance. So it's, it shows how much I pay monthly on everything, the total, and then the full amount of the cars. So here, as you can see, everything has a total at the end in yellow. This is just the only one that's blue, but this right here totals up all my expenses. So this 2766 comes from the overhead expenses, mortgage and all that included the 600 a month that I pay toward my credit cards and the um the monthly that I pay on my car notes and the car insurance, which puts me at eight thirty seven thirty nine. So I'm looking at uh, a little over thirty six hundred a month as far as debt. So uh, this is how I keep up. I mean, you see some other stuff down here too. I have a company called Family First Needs. If if you don't know, it's um yeah side business. We won't get into it. That that's kind of going off subject but I kind of keep up with that too and that's just kind of what this is like the credit cards that I use a lot I put at the bottom of my budget sheet but we're not gonna get into that too much but um yeah and even to the right I do like future goals to kind of keep me motivated on three properties by the end of next year trade in one of my um by 2024, not next year. Lord, I'm I'm talking like it's already 2023. But anyway, trading one of my cars for a Benz by Christmas. I'm not doing that, not because I can't, but just like the housing market has shot up, the interest rate shot up, the same happened with cars. I ain't got time. They was trying to get your girl to pay like 11, 1200 a month for a car, which is almost close to my mortgage. And I just will not, I will be in my little Chrysler 200 Paying my little, as you can see, three thirty six a month before I jump into a car note like that. That's ridiculous. But um, uh, the other one is I wanted to do a vacation cruise with the hubby and the kids, and eventually I'm gonna pay off that Chevy Equinox and get me something nice. But yeah, like I just want to show y'all this. Oh, I'm big with auto pay too. So if you see a whole bunch of capital A's, all of this stuff is auto pay. Like ninety nine point nine percent of my stuff is auto pay. Only because look at all the stuff that I pay like monthly. It's a lot, right? So imagine if I had to remember to pay every last one of these on whatever date that they were due. Because everything ain't due on the 1st and the 15th. So you have to remember specifically like dates. And I just ain't, I just ain't got time. So I do auto pay. It's safer. It works for me. I know the money is always there. I make sure the money is always there. So it's just, it's just a whole lot easier for me, but you do what works best for you. But that's what the capital A's mean. But I recommend that people do budget sheets just so you can kind of get a gist of where you stand. You definitely want to get somewhat of an idea of where you stand, especially before you go for a home or a car, because the the worst thing that can happen is if you let somebody do a hard inquiry on your um your credit. And let's say you didn't do your homework, you didn't know what your score was, you didn't know what your debt uh, income debt ratio was, and you know what I'm saying you got denied. Like now you got a inquiry on your credit score, which is gonna make your score drop even more. So it's like. I definitely advise people to do their homework, pull out a sheet, something like this, even if you did the old fashioned way with a pencil and pen and wrote down your expenses and compared it to your revenue, like how much you're bringing in on a monthly basis and see if you could potentially qualify, like definitely. And it's not even just for qualifying, like physically seeing this is an accomplishment to me. When I'm making payments and over the days, weeks and months and years, my debt is going down. That's an accomplishment. It makes me feel good to see that physically happening in front of me. And it's just a huge motivator to me. And I think it would be for anybody. Just, But, you know, me personally, this is my thing. This is how I stay on track to better just not me, but my kids. And, you know what I'm saying, be a team player for my husband. Like, you know. I'm, I'm I'm not the typical my husband pay all the bills type of female like if something was to happen to him guess what I need to be able to you know what I'm saying like pull up the family support the family and be able to handle and do whatever I got to do and this helps me 
make sure of that, you know. So, again, this is my budget sheet. I use Microsoft Excel to get it done. And, yeah, definitely jump on it. Think about it. If you ain't did it already, it's something good. I'm telling you, get her done. Another thing that I would want to kind of talk about is collection agencies when it comes to the credit scores. First of all, I want people to know that I was not always in the position that I'm in. As a matter of fact, I've had collection agencies trying in me all the way up as early as last year. And the first thing I want to let people know about collection agencies Stop ignoring them. I notice that's a big thing for people. When people come to me and they're like, Crystal, I want to try out, I want to do the home ownership program. I want to put in an application. Um, what do you do to better your credit score? Stop ignoring agencies. Stop ignoring collection agencies. Because um, when they're calling and calling and calling and you ain't saying nothing, best believe it's going to hit your credit score. And once it hits that credit report, it's... It's hell trying to get it removed. So the best thing you want to do when it comes to protecting your credit score is protecting it before something actually hits it. So uh, another thing too, do your homework. When a collection agency calls you, sometimes they ain't even, they're not even legit. It could be a whole scam and they're just trying to get money out of you by planting fear in you. And sometimes that's enough to get somebody People lose out, like lose thousands, and I was one of those people. So I I know firsthand, believe me. Like, I've dealt with collections. I had some things going on. Like, my son, when he was born, he was always sick. I didn't always have um, medical insurance. Uh, Thankful, you know, like, I'm married to the man that I love now, my husband, who is active duty, and, you know, we all have TRICARE now. But there was one point where my son was not covered and he was always sick and I had doctors, everybody running after me and it got to the point where I couldn't afford it and a lot of stuff fell into collections. But, um, you know, I did what I had to do. I got out of my situation. I paid out all of my debt and I moved forward and I'm good. But I had some scamming collection companies who got wind of that debt that I did have back in the day and they would come back years later and try to scare me and say hey um doctor's hospital gave this account to us said you owe such and such and such and such oh did they what's the name of your company they tell me the name I go google it and I see tons and tons of reviews about how this company's a scam don't pay them anything they're not real so and then when I let them know like hey I know you're not legit you're not real they disappear. So, but I say that to say, one, don't ignore collection agencies. Two, make sure you know their day. Three, make sure you do your homework and you search for that company before you just straight disappear on them. Never disappear, always communicate, but do your homework before you start dishing out the funds. Two, let's say, or three, let's say that the debt that they're calling about is legit and they're a legit company. Talk with them. Try to come up with an amount that you can pay. Because I guarantee, I bet money 99.9%. I ain't even going to say that 100% of the time. If you say, I acknowledge the debt, but I don't have the money for it. I just don't have it. Their next question is going to be, how much can you pay? And they're going to always lower that amount that they're requiring from you. Because I guarantee, whatever they pay for your account, whoever the actual person that you, or the original company that you owed, Whoever that was, they bought your account from them for way less than their accent of you from, you know, that time that they call and they're saying, hey, this is a collection company. You owe $500, for example. I guarantee they paid less than that when they bought it from the original company that you owed it to. So you don't have it. Okay, so how much do you have? How much can you spend? Work, work something out. Don't just ignore them and screw up your credit, which screws up your future. You know what I'm saying? Like there's going to come a time when you want to buy a house, you want to purchase that car, but you don't want a crazy mortgage or, you know what I'm saying? Um, not crazy mortgage, but crazy uh, interest amount, or you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Pay more. Like people I know, cause I've been there, you have like horrible credit. You got to pay a higher deposit. Like 
don't don't put yourself in that situation if you don't have to. So I always try to work something out with somebody. And usually they'll settle on something that's much less. If they do, get it in writing. Whatever y'all agree to, get it in writing and ask that once the debt is paid in full, that they remove it from your credit. Because who the hell <laughs> wants to put all this energy into paying something just for it to stay on their credit? So let that definitely be your second question. Ask how much, you know, y'all decide on the amount y'all, you, you can pay, agree to it, and get it in writing that once it's paid in full, they remove it from your credit score. Another thing I, I found out too, because my anything I'm telling you is because I personally went through it. So something else I noticed was sometimes you can go back to the original person that you owed, even though they gave it to a collection agency, they can always pull it back. So uh, agency calls you, let's say, ah, I want to pay them. Let me, let me go back to the original person first. I always go back to the original person to make sure this debt is real for one, go back to them. And I say, well, if I pay you guys, will you remove it from my credit? Because you do have some collection agencies that won't remove it from your, um, your credit score. Like they want you to make the payments, but they're not willing to remove it from your credit. When you hear that, which you will sometimes because all companies don't do it, go back to the original person that you owed and said, hey, if I pay you, will you have that debt um, agency company remove it from my credit? And some will. I've done it before. So I'm saying this to say, don't ignore collection agencies. Do your homework before you make a payment to a collection agency and even go back to the original person that you owed sometimes before you pay a collection agency. Do whatever you can. In other words, I'm telling you to do whatever you can to get stuff removed from your credit or keep it or prevent it from even hitting your credit to begin with. For example, people ask me, because right now I quit my job at the VA for people who do not know. And people be like, she ain't never working. Like, how do you not have a job, but you're able to buy properties? How you don't have a job, but you're able to pay the mortgage here? How you don't have a job, whatever the case may be. And um, I'm going to tell y'all a secret. Y'all want to know what my secret is? My secret is my credit score. I use my credit score. My credit score is like in the mid sevens. My goal is to get it in the eight hundreds, but my issue with my credit score is my credit history. I think the oldest credit card I have is like 11 years old is from my star card. But other than that, the average history uh, time that I have on my credit cards is like four years, which is a long time. So because of that, I can't get past like 750 for nothing. But anyway, I use my credit score to my advantage. I have multiple credit cards. Like, ask my husband or anybody that knows me. I will go anywhere and pull out a credit card like crazy. It's beneficial to me because, A, I can buy a whole bunch of stuff if I wanted to without using my personal funds. Two, because I have multiple credit cards, it's easier for me to charge without have going over 30% because I have so many credit cards. So let's say one card is at 10% already. I got like eight other credit cards. You know what I'm saying? So I can spread my debt out without it charging, without me having to charge out a credit card, if that makes any sense. And three, it's like, let's say, God forbid, something happens. I'm in a bind financially. I have my credit cards to fall on. I don't ha always have to use my personal funds. So guess what? I could let my personal funds or income that I do have coming in stack if I want to, or I can use it sometimes or don't when I just use my credit cards. And if you remember, I also do auto pay on my credit cards. So I never miss a payment. And like I said, I'm charging, but I'm also paying behind it. But let's say Christmas shopping, like I said, I come up, I spend like $1,500, $2,000 on my kids. I'm not paying that up front. I'm charging that on a $9,000 credit card. So credit score is important, which is why I'm making this video like about talking about collection agencies, making sure your credit is good. It's not even about just purchasing a home, even though I am you know, a real estate agent and I would love to gain more clientele and I would love to be able to coach people through the buying process. But my credit score gets me so much more. It gives me the cushion that I need. 
um, if it wasn't for my credit score, I wouldn't even be able to do what I do as far as like quitting my job at the VA and diving into what I love to do most. And that's real estate without my credit score, I wouldn't have the credit cards that I have to be able to, to lean on, you know what I'm saying? So there's definitely a lot of advantages of going back to, like I said, creating a budget sheet, keeping up with the amount of expenses that you have, the amount of income or revenue you got coming in and just staying on top of it. It benefits you in so many ways. It's, it's deeper than buying a house, but that's definitely going to be a, an advantage for you when it comes to purchasing a home. If you stay up on, on your finances and your money and be smart about the opportunities you have or the things, you know, that we're able to obtain and discipline. That's the, the, the biggest thing I think we need to learn as adults, discipline. If you got discipline, it ain't discipline, a hustle and drive them three right there. Y'all like it ain't nothing you can't do, but I, I, I could talk forever about that. I won't get into all of that, but this completes my video. Why is my, oh, it want to blur up. Oh my God. But yeah, this completes my video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this helped somebody. I definitely hope it helps somebody. If you're looking for a house, you just want to know some information on the housing market a little bit more in detail. I didn't want this video to be long as hell. Like most of my videos are, I wanted this to be pretty short, but I hope I help at least one person with this video today. If not, just giving somebody motivation is enough help, you know, enough for me to feel good. Like I did something for somebody, but again, thanks for watching and stay tuned to the next one. What? <laughs> I'll see y'all later. <laughs>